I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I trust you're having a good time this week with your various forays into technology. Uh, I'm doing pretty well when it comes to tech, as you're going to see here shortly. And we'll get into that in just a minute. But for right now, I want to remind you that we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. We've got a lot of things we want to share with you. And not the least of which is, if I can lift it up here into the screen, is my laptop. There it is. We're going to talk more about that in just a moment as I show you how I have moved over finally into the world of Linux officially and permanently. So, matter of fact, why don't we go ahead and I'll show you my Linux laptop. Okay, so if this is working the way I hope it is, you are now seeing my new Fedora laptop screen. My mouse is trying to escape. Stay where you are, mouse. Okay, here's the thing. I started supporting, well, let me back up a few steps. First of all, I'm a Linux geek from way, 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 way back. As a matter of fact, and I hesitate to mention this, but the original email that Linus Torvalds sent out many, many years ago, back in the early 90s, saying that he was going to create a new operating system based on Minix that was going to be uh, unix -y in its nature, which he was going to call Linux, based on his name, Linus, Linux. So, he announced it on the news groups. I saw the post and thought, dude, that's so cool. And so, the early iterations of Linux, I started downloading and playing with, particularly Slackware and so forth. But I digress. The point is that I've been playing with Linux since its inception. However, I've never quite made the transition to fully being on Linux. I know it's sad, but once you get in the Windowsy world, you're kind of stuck there, you know what I mean? So, finally, I made the transition fully to Linux, and I did it with Ubuntu. Now, you might say, but Dr. Bill, this is Fedora. Yes, it is. That's because recently I took over the reins of being the system administrator handling Linux at High Point Regional Health System where I work. And there we use Red Hat Linux. Well, Fedora is Red Hat's, you might say, client operating system. And so I said, well, if I'm going to be a Red Hat dude, then I might as well go ahead and go with their uh, client operating system as well. So let me go ahead and log in. This might be a little awkward since I'm having to reach around the camera, but we'll do it out of sheer force of will. There we go. And I'm logging in now to my Fedora laptop. And as you can see, it has to have a Star Trek background. <clears throat> That's just the way it is, okay? Anyway, look at all the goodies over here. Also, if I go up here to activities, you can see that I have all kinds of icons lined up there for the activities. But the first thing I want to show you is something that I already talked about, and that is eSword running under crossover right here on Linux. Now, eSword is a Windows-only program. I'm going to go ahead and crank it up here, and it takes a few seconds to launch because it is, after all, having to run a Windows program from or under Linux using Crossover. Now, what amazes me about this is how easy it was to install, absolutely phenomenally fall over a log easy, and then once it's installed, it runs just like it does in the Windows world. Now check this out. Here are all my uh, translations of the Bible. This is the Strong's 
working so when I hover over a word it gives me the definition and the strongs. I can go to other translations by using the tabs up here just like Windows. I mean it is exactly like operating under Windows. Now you might say, wow Dr. Bill you're excited about this. Well what I found is it not only works for eSword, which is what the package was intended to work with. In other words, I purchased it for $29 uh, as a solution to running eSword under Linux. But the crossover uh, system works well for other applications, and so I'm even running other Windows programs under that same application. So it really is nice. Now the other things I have here are things of course like LibreOffice that come with Fedora. I have Chrome running. I have uh, Firefox. Go ahead and go into Chrome because Chrome as you know is my favorite browser. Another thing I like about this that was a, a way to bring me into the Linux world is that um, I'm going to choose not to restore my previous session, but uh, the thing is here is all of my customizations, all of my bookmarks, all of the programs that run like LastPass and all my other tools here just came in perfectly and work just as they do under Windows. So again, this is part of why it was so easy to make this transition. Now if I go to my YouTube page, by the way you notice YouTube now has a new format and uh, you can go in here and you can look at the feed of all of the programs and they're saying look you got an upgrade yes I know uh, you can look at featured shows and of course it will actually crank up and start uh, the episode that I'm highlighting it's explaining to me all of the features of the new format of YouTube and that's really not the purpose that I have in doing this but it does show you that all the Dr. Bill shows are out there under the new YouTube format channel but the cool thing is is all of my various functions work just like they're supposed to and I, that just is exciting to me because it was a very easy transition to move to Linux and I'm talking about I use this uh, at work. This is my work laptop. So all of the functionality, I've got the view uh, client here, I've got the Citrix receiver, I've got uh, the uh, VMware workstation version 8 running here, uh, basically all the tools, Skype, I've got Skype running under Linux, all of these things run natively under Linux. And so I wanted to show you that I have finally made the transition. I'm now fully Linux uh, operational there at work and it's working rather well. And the nice thing is I can run this VMware View client and connect to a Windows 7 View session if I absolutely positively have to have something that only runs under Windows from work. So it makes it very handy to be able to uh, do pretty much whatever I need to do in Linux. So just wanted to show you that and uh, let you know that uh, this is available. And the great thing about it is with Linux, think about it, it's free. This is a free operating system and yet all this functionality works just as it should. So we can go over here, we can say a log out and then we can also just for fun. Oh, by the way, notice the submarine here. That's because this uh, particular edition of Fedora is Fedora 16, which is codenamed Vern, as in Jules Vern. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and power off, and you'll notice it closes down nice and clean, and it boots fast, shuts down fast. I'm telling you. I really, really like it. All right, see, isn't that cool? All the good stuff you can do with Linux. I'm telling you, it's awesome. And as I mentioned in that segment, it is free. Now, that means no paying a Microsoft, you know, license um, <laughs> royalty. I'm trying to be kind. You know, I've referred to it before as the extortion of Microsoft. That's a little harsh, I guess, but anyway.
I mean, they're in it for the business, okay, but uh, they just charge you out the wazoo. By the way, have you ever wondered what a wazoo is? Perhaps I shouldn't go there. I don't know what it is. Anyway, let's look at some of the items we have on the blog, of course, drbill.cc, cc, of course, for computer curmudgeon. So let's go there and find out what's up. Kindle Fire sales are on fire! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, okay. This is cross-posted from the Handheld Hack, which is, of course, at handheldhack.com. That's the other blog and or netcast that we do. One of many, actually. But at any rate. Uh, Kindle Fire sales on fire. Well, okay, I want a Kindle Fire. I know I already have a notebook. Not note. Well, I have a notebook. Yes, I have that too. I already have a tablet, the ViewSonic G tablet, and I really like it. But the Kindle Fire is, you know, it's another shiny new toy. Yes. And of course, that's why I like shiny new toys. So I'm going to save up some pennies, a lot of them, and hopefully get one down the road. But in the meantime, three to four million, million have already shipped and 5 million expected by 2012, which is not that far away. I mean, we're already into December of 2011. So 2012 is not that far away. Anyway, here's what they say. They say, we knew the Amazon Kindle was a popular tablet, but just how popular is slowly becoming clear. Water cooler talk in Taipei points to Amazon shipping between 3 to 4 million Kindle fires, and they're continuing to increase orders for the popular Android tablet. Suppliers expect that shipments will ram up, yes, to around 5 million units by the end of December or early January. Wow. Wintech, who is a major supplier of touch panels for the Kindle Fire, has recently raised its internal forecast of shipments to Amazon. Industry sources have estimated that Wintech will ship about 3 to 3.5 million touch panels for Kindle Fire before January. Wow. So the Kindle Fire is, as I said, on fire. Now, next item. We talked about it briefly in the previous segment concerning uh, the Linux notebook computer adventure that I was on. And I showed a little bit of YouTube's new look. YouTube is going for a new, cleaner, more modern kind of a look. And it's, you know, it's good. It's fine. Uh, I did see a post from uh, Bawana. And, uh, you know, Buona.tv, he has a netcast as well. And he posted on Twitter that, what are you people at YouTube, what are you all about? Do you just get your jollies making us go crazy every month with all your changes? <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's, it's a digital fresh coat of paint is one of the things they said here in this article. Uh, yes. So, the new design is much easier to navigate and has a lot of new features, and it's kind of cool. You know, I like it pretty well. They'll change it again. If you don't like this one, hang around five minutes, they'll change it again, okay? <laughs> Next item, Google Chrome. Oh, this is awesome. Google Chrome passes Firefox in web popularity. Now, there are dudes out there that keep track of all the browsers, okay? And who uses what browser? Wow. I mean, talk about bored. But anyway, eh, you know, I mean, why not? So the bean counters at Stat Counter have revealed that Google's Chrome web browser has leapfrogged Mozilla's Firefox in the global market share. Cool. Which I'm all for because, as you know, I'm a big Chrome guy. I like the Chrome browser a lot. Now, I've mentioned that one of my co-workers uh, is an anti-Google dude. He's really, he thinks that Google is out to take over the world and that they're spying on you all the time. And I agree, they kind of are spying on you, but not in the sense that I think he's trying to say they are. I don't think it's some nefarious plot to take over the world. I look at it more as that they're just gleaning information 
that's relatively freely available by your browsing habits. And then they're using that, they're monetizing that to stay in business. Well, dude, more power to them. You know what I'm saying? And besides that, they offer a very click, click, quick, slick browser. If you combine quick and slick together, you'll get whatever I said. Yes. Click. Right. Clean, quick, slick browser. Yes. Anyway, the point is, it is really, really fast. Firefox has gotten heavy and bloated and slow and just no fun. You know what I'm saying? Now, the one thing I do like about Firefox, and the only reason I still, well, two reasons that I still use it briefly, and that is, meaning occasionally, uh, Firefox does display RSS feeds very, very nicely. I like that. Um, Google Chrome doesn't display RSS feeds. They, it just shows the XML code. Uh, the reason being, Google has their own RSS reader. And so they didn't want to incorporate that into the browser. Dudes, get over yourselves. I've said this before. Put it back in the browser where it belongs. Anyway, so I use Firefox just to view RSS feeds to make sure that they come out right and so forth, okay? The other thing is there is a neat feature which is called Firefog. Firefog. As a matter of fact, I'm debating whether I should make Firefog a Geek Software of the Week. Let's go see if I have already done that before, because I may have already done that. Do, 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 do. I have not. So therefore, <laughs> the, the drum roll caught up with me. It was listening. Yes, Firefog is our Geek Software of the Week. Spur of the moment. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Firefog. Here's the thing about Firefox. It is a website that you go to, but you have to use Firefox and you have to install a little uh, add-in tool thingy. And between the two, it will allow you to transcode, don't you love that word transcode? Transcode your videos from a format, like I use M4, uh, M4V, is that right? You know, it's sad when you have to constantly think, is that what I really meant to say when I'm saying things? Because later on I'll go, is that really, is that really it? Yes, M4V. I knew what I was talking about. <sighs> Trust me. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> anyway, M4V. Take the M4V file run it through Firefog, where you can select the option Create Web Video, and it will convert it to WebM. And WebM, it's hard to say, WebM streams very nicely and is something that you can use with HTML5, which we've talked about recently, how we may eventually totally go to HTML5 and WebM videos right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, if you want to transcode your own videos, you can use Firefog. And that's this week's Geek Software of the Week. How cool is that? So there you go. So anyway, we had our Linux netbook, not netbook, notebook. Why is it so hard to say notebook? Anyway, notebook segment. We had our Geek Software of the Week segment, and we had our tech news. How cool is that? Now, I also want to remind you that we have a sponsor that is awesome and that is, of course, Citrix Systems. And if you are at all interested in this, and you should be, Citrix Systems has awesome software that allows you to have meetings right on the interwebs which is, of course, GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting with HD Faces. You can get a 30-day free trial by using this URL right here, very special URL, GoToMeeting.com, with the special secret code word. Are you ready? Podcast. 
Yes, the secret, super secret special word podcast. Enter that and you will be able to get a 30-day free trial of GoToMeeting. I encourage you to do that. Do it now. Now. And as you can tell, I'm here in my living room doing the netcast because I did the segment with the the notebook here and you see it was already out here on my table and so I just decided I'm already here why not go ahead and do it here basically laziness eh what can you say anyway so I trust you enjoyed the netcast this week tell your friends they all need to know about Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon and drbill.tv. D-R-B-I-L-L dot TV, as it says right there. Okay, so, until next time, remember that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.